Hey, Abbott, what time is it? It's time for the Abbott and Costello Show. We're on the air for ABC here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. Yes, it's the Abbott and Costello Show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood for your listening and laughing pleasure with chuckles by the carload and music by Matty Malnick. So hold on to your chairs, folks, for here they are, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello! All right, all right, all right. Stop, stop that noise. Oh, why, excuse me, Abbott, I couldn't help it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is strictly to the audience. Ladies and gentlemen, right now we introduce our new special feature on the Abbott and Costello program called Start the Music. To the person that can identify this tune, we will give a beautiful television set. Now, here's the tune. I know! That's the third note in the second movement of George Gershman's Rhapsody in Blue. Blabbermouth. <laughs> that ends our contest. <laughs> Cut that out and come over here. Where were you this afternoon? Uncle Mike got arrested. He was standing in the front door in his long underwear when they surprised him. <laughs> Why didn't he escape through the back door? He couldn't. It was buttoned down too tight. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, never mind your Uncle Mike. Uh, who's that letter from? That's from my Uncle Tom. He settled down in Egypt. Now he's got a harem with 3,000 wives. It's great. I can imagine, with 3,000 wives. Yeah, he says that every morning when he comes down to breakfast, he sings the harem song. The harem song? What's hmm. that? I call everybody darling. <laughs> what a bunch of idiots in your family. I don't know why I associate with you. I've got royal blood in my veins. Oh, you have? Yes, well, my I grandma... got, uh, I beg your pardon? That's mine, yes. My, gra <laughs> my grandmother went, went back to Sir Walter Raleigh. My grandfather, my grandmother smokes a pipe too, you know. <laughs> you know, I gotta leave now, Abbott. I got a date with my new girl. She's from Texas. She's a real cowgirl. She spends all her time with her cattle. She eats with the cattle, she sleeps with the cattle, and practically lives with the cattle. Are you going to make love with her? Well, only if the wind is right. I... <laughs> You're in for some real laughs with our zany stars tonight. But before they continue, listen to this. What was all the excitement at your house last night? I beg your pardon? What was all the excitement at your house last night? Well, my Uncle Mike came home loaded, and he started an argument with my Aunt May. She wanted him to stay home, and he wanted to go out, so he put his foot down. What happened? He went out like a light. <laughs> my Aunt May dragged him upstairs, put him to bed. Then some neighbors dropped over to play some cards with Aunt May, and while they were playing, that's when the accident happened. What accident? Somebody held up gin, and Uncle Mike broke his leg trying to get downstairs. <laughs> Costello, your Uncle Mike is a lazy loafer, just like the rest of your family. Your brother Pat is always hanging out in Hollywood and Vine. And... Just a uh, second. What do you mean, just a just second? Just a second. My brother Pat has a right to be on the corner of Hollywood and Vine. He's a veteran, and he's looking for a house. Wait a minute. I... Wait a minute. I thought the government built him a house. That's the one he's looking for. It I... keeps blowing away. <laughs> Your 
Brother Pat still going with that uh, rancher's daughter out in the valley, Lou? Nope, he's married to her now. Well, well, that's fine. After 15 years, he finally married her. Uh, what, what got into him? Buckshot. Buckshot. <laughs> Buckshot. He married her because her father is one of the biggest cattlemen in Nevada. Someday she'll own all that cattle. How can you say that, Abbott? Does my brother Pat look like the type of guy that would marry a woman for her prime ribs? <laughs> Costello, why do you always talk like a nincompoop and act like an idiot? Because I refuse to put on airs. Uh, <laughs> well, never mind that. I noticed you bought a lot of medical books yesterday. What are you doing with them? I'm studying plastic surgery, Abbott. You a surgeon. You don't know the first thing about surgery. Listen, you, I once operated on a guy who took his brain out and put it in a bottle of alcohol. You took a man's brain out? Early. Where is he now? Last November, he got elected to Congress. <laughs> You a doctor? What proof have you got that you're a doctor? Just look at the label on the inside of my coat here. Quick, come on. What does it say? Hot Shafter and Mars. I'll read the rest of it. Uh, Baltimore. And the rest of it. What does it say? MD. MD. There you are. Any more questions? I. <laughs> Mr. Costello, Mr. Costello. Oh, uh, who's this guy, Costello? This is my new show for Milton. What is it, Milton? I did the shopping just like you told me to. Yeah. I drove all up and down Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah. Here's a key to your car and a steering wheel. Uh. <laughs> the keys and the steering wheel. Uh, where is the rest of the car? All up and down Hollywood Boulevard. Costello, <laughs> why do you let an idiot like that drive your car? Well, it ain't his fault, Abbott. The traffic is getting worse here in California every day. Next week, they're putting in some new traffic laws. New traffic laws? Yes, every driver in Hollywood is going to have to drive with a big stein of beer alongside of him or on the front seat. Well, how will that help? Well, everybody knows that two heads are better than one. <laughs> well, we'll have, we'll have plenty of new laws, Costello, now that President Truman has gone back to the White House. And well, Governor Dewey's gone back to Albany. And Congress has gone back to sleep. I... <laughs> Costello, you have no right to make fun of our present administration. Yeah, but I was only kidding. When Truman was elected, I sent him a telegram. No kidding, I did, too. Of uh, congratulations. And for Christmas, I even sent President Truman's little dog a flute. You sent the president's dog a flute? A flute. And why not? When Harry plays the piano, who'll be able to tell whether the pooch is sharp or flat? <laughs> well, well, boys. Did I hear you discussing politics, huh? Let me introduce myself. I'm Senator Cobb from Cobbler's Knob. Glad to meet you, boys. Senator Cobb from Cobbler's Knob. Sounds I... like a new character coming into the show. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't believe I ever heard of you. You never heard of me? I don't think so. <laughs> I'm the man that put in that great big pipeline. The pipeline from California all the way to Washington, D.C. To carry oil from the oil fields? No, sir. This pipeline carried chocolate marshmallow sundaes with whipped cream and hot fudge sauce clear across the country. How did it work? Well, it worked fine, but for one little thing. And what was that? The pipeline busted Missouri, and half of St. Louis got gooey. <laughs> <laughs> so long, Louis. <laughs> You know, I'm glad that Senator Cobb dropped in, Abbott. Maybe he can help my Uncle Mike uh, get us an invention patented. Your Uncle Mike's got an invention now? Yep. It does away with all those wet paint signs on freshly painted buildings. How does it work? Well, when somebody starts to touch the paint, a voice yells, Get away from there. The paint is wet. Don't touch that. The paint is wet. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Where does the voice come from? My Aunt May. She sits on the roof. <laughs> Hello, boys. Well, well, it's our lovely secretary. Uh, Viola Vaughn. Oh, yes, Viola Vaughn. You look beautiful tonight, Viola. How about you and I stepping out after the show? No, no, you don't have it. Viola's going out with me. Oh, well, I hate to disappoint you, boys, but tonight I'm giving my cat a bath. Well, how about tomorrow night? Uh, tomorrow night I'm taking my cat to the cat show. How about Saturday night? Oh, Saturday night I'll be busy. What's your cat doing? I... <laughs> You know, Viola, I got a beautiful cat. It's a Persian cat, and it's very unusual. Every night it sits on a fence and calls to another Persian cat that lives in the next block. Well, what's unusual about that? It's a Persian to Persian call. <laughs> Viola, why don't you break your date and go out with Costello? Oh, I can't. My date is with Bert Lancaster. Oh, you don't want to go out with him, Viola. 
Why not? Well, he'll only take you to some expensive place for dinner, then to the Macambo, then to another expensive place for dancing. It will kill your whole evening. <laughs> Costello, I like Burt Lancaster. Why? He's young. I'm young. He's romantic. I'm romantic. He has big, broad shoulders. I got big, broad shoulders. He makes $150,000 a year. I got big, broad shoulders. <laughs> Costello, how can you compare yourself with a great dramatic star like Burt Lancaster? And besides, he's got money to burn. So what? Everybody's got money to burn. These days, it's cheaper than coal. Believe me. Costello, tell me, what have you got against Burt Lancaster? Oh, he's always putting on a big front. He drives three cars. Well, lots of big stars drive three cars, Lou. At the same time? I... <laughs> oh, I just can't wait until I meet Bert. I'm just dying to have him hold me in his arms. What's the matter with me holding you in my arms? Viola, it looks like you're going to have to make a choice between Costello and Burke Lancaster. Now, who's it going to be? Well, when a girl has a chance to get a porterhouse steak, you wouldn't expect her to settle for a can of Strongheart. <laughs> He doesn't love me anyway What do you mean? Well, Costello had a chance to move into my apartment building And he wouldn't take it That was on account of the lease they wanted me to sign It said no playing radio in the building after 8 o'clock No visitors after 9 o'clock And you've got to be in bed by 10 well, What's wrong with that? I'm not staying up an extra hour for nobody <laughs> Oh, so long, fatso Now you've done it, Costello You've hurt her feelings Well, she's a nice kid, Abbott only there's only one thing wrong with her. She's girl crazy. Girl crazy? Yeah, she keeps telling me if I don't find another girl, she'll go crazy. Get him out of here! Get him out! <laughs> and there's a lot more mad stuff still to come. But right now, I'll change your face to let you hear this. gentlemen, the singing star of our show, Hal Winters, with Maddie Malnick's orchestra. Somebody's lying when she says, I don't care. Somebody's lying and she's not playing fair. Somebody's lying when she says that I'm untrue. You know I'll never love no one but you. Somebody's hoping we'll break up someday. Waiting and hoping you send me away. Don't you believe what someone else is saying? Somebody's lying, sweetheart. Somebody's lying when she says I'm untrue. No, I'll never love no one but you Somebody's hoping we'll break up someday 
Waiting and hoping you'll send me away. Don't you believe what someone else is saying? Somebody's lying, sweetheart. Somebody's lying, sweetheart. Somebody's lying, sweetheart. Hey, Abbott. Could I go home a little early tonight? What for? I got to do a little work on my Sam Shovel Crime Laboratory. I'm going to mix some nitroglycerin with hydrochloric acid and TNT and heat the mixture on my stove. You dummy, if you do that, you'll blow the roof off your house tonight. Oh, no, I won't. What makes you so sure? I blew it off last night. <laughs> Costello, why don't you quit the Sam Shovel detective business? You're not smart enough to be a detective. You're ignorant, illiterate, and uneducated. I am not uneducated. I went to school and I was smart too, Abbott And I'll never forget the day I was promoted from the third grade to the fourth grade The day you were promoted from the third grade to the fourth grade? Yeah How can you remember that? Because that morning I was so nervous I had to get my mother to shave me <laughs> And anyway, I'm not going to quit the Sam Shovel Detective Series Our listeners are crazy about it Here's a fan letter I got today And it says, Dear Lou Costello As Sam Shovel Detective, you are the funniest guy I ever heard When I listen to you, I shake the house with laughter Last week I laughed so hard I thought the ceiling would cave in I'm coming to the studio to see you tonight Mr. Costello, there's a man here to see you What does he look like? I, I can't, can't tell, tell. He's, he's all, all covered, covered with, with plaster. plaster I figured out what he was Never mind him What's your Sam Shovel story about tonight, Lou? Well, it's one of my oriental cases, Abbott One of my oriental cases I call it the case of the Chinaman who poisoned his own food or he committed chop suicide. <laughs> well, let's go on with the case. Oh, definitely. And now, the makers of Sludge Motor Oil present the adventures of Sam Shovel, private detective. But first, a word about our product. Motorists, have you been changing your oil every month? Switch to sludge. When you use sludge motor oil, you will never have to change oil. Of course, every six months, you'll have to get a new car. <laughs> Does your motor ping? Switch to sludge and it'll pong. <laughs> then you can sit and watch your motor play ping pong. <laughs> the next time you buy sludge motor oil, fill up with its companion product, Naco Gasoline. And remember, friends, Naco Gasoline not only contains ethyl, it contains Mabel. We know because... <laughs> Mabel fell into one of the vats at the refinery this morning. So if you want extra mileage, use Naco Gasoline. Listen to what one of our satisfied customers has to say. Duh, duh, duh. I bought two gallons of Naco Gasoline before I left Chicago. Uh -huh. When I got into Los Angeles this morning, I still had two quarts left. Thank you, sir. Uh, what kind of a car do you drive? Uh, who's got a car? I got a cigarette lighter. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> Remember, friends, Naco is the greatest selling gas in the market. We've got to sell it in the market. The filling stations won't touch it. <laughs> and now to the adventures of Sam Shovel, private detective. <laughs> Yes, I'm Sam Shovel. Sam Shovel, private detective. They call me a private eye. I can smell a murder a mile away. I can smell a frame up. I can smell anything crooked. Private eye. They ought to call me private nose. <laughs> I'm sitting here in my little office. I notice a mouse crawling across my office door. It's a church mouse. <laughs> I open a drawer of my desk to check my equipment. There's my gun. There's my handcuffs. There's my binoculars. Comrade, I got the plans for the secret weapons. Those are my spy glasses. 
I decided to fill out my application for a 1949 California driver's license. They're making the test tougher this year. To get a license, you have to learn to speak pig Latin. That's so you can talk to the road hogs in Hollywood. <laughs> On my desk, I noticed a picture of one of the cleverest women crooks in the business. She was what the police call a top drawer thief. When I finally caught her, she had a garage full of top drawers. <laughs> she was a cute girl, but very shy. The first time I saw her, she dropped her eyes. I picked them up. <laughs> One was an agate. <laughs> she had a little turned-up nose, a real turned-up nose. Every time she sneezed, she blew her hat off. <laughs> she had a very clever racket. She'd make a friend of a guy, kiss him, and give him a cold. Every guy she met, she'd give him a kiss and give him a cold. I finally arrested her for making friends and influencing people. <laughs> you work hard in this detective racket. I always remember my mother's advice. She said to me, Sam, if you want to get a job, remember the early bird catches the worm. I followed that advice for 20 years. I never got a job, but I got about 8 million worms. <laughs> she also gave me my brother, Pat, his advice also. She said to him, go west, young man, go west. He followed her advice and drowned. <laughs> he was living in Pismo Beach at the time. <laughs> Suddenly I see someone coming into the office. Hello, Sam Shovel. Hello, Lieutenant Abbott. Pull up a chair and sit down. I'm tired. I've been taking care of the mounted cop's horses. I've been working in the stables all day. Pull up a window and sit down. <laughs> Sam, I've been working on a fur robbery case. Somebody stole a mink coat, and a mink coats are hard to identify. I'm an expert on furs, Lieutenant. You know, there's two types of mink, male and female mink. Sam, that's a good thing to know. Yes, especially if you happen to be a mink. <laughs> oh, forget about the case, Sam. Tell me, how do you like my new suit? I had to admit to Lieutenant Abbott... That he had good taste for clothes. Of all the detectives in town, Abbott has the best taste for clothes. He can chew up a vest and tell you what kind of gravy is on it. <laughs> Lieutenant Abbott, why do you always wear that big elk's tooth with a diamond in it? What's wrong with that, Sam? Lots of men wear a big elk's tooth with a diamond in it. In the middle of their upper plate? <laughs> this remark made Lieutenant Abbott smile. I love to see him smile. He only has two teeth. <laughs> but he has the most beautiful set of gums I've ever seen. <laughs> well, Sam, you've got to admit I'm a self-made man. When I was born, I was very poor. I had nothing. Lieutenant Abbott is right. He came into this world empty-handed, and he had a head to match. <laughs> Sam, I worked hard to get where I am for 20 years. I've had my nose to the grindstone. Must have been a butte when you started. <laughs> Never mind that. Sam, we've got to do something about crime in this town. Every day it gets worse. Yes. I know. Only last week, the girl next door, Mary Brown, had her good name ruined. Mary Brown? Mary Brown had her good name ruined? How did it happen? She married a guy named Hoopensnorter. <laughs> Hello, Sam Shovel, Private Detective speaking. Uh, Detective Sam Shovel, this is Constable Smith speaking. Uh, bing, uh, um, um, I've got an unsolved murder out here. I need your help. Uh, come out to the Jones Farm at once. Constable, I'll be glad to take the case. How do I get to the Jones Farm from my office? Well, now, let me see. Uh, let me see. Um, the Jones Farm. Oh, yeah. You drive out the Cougabunga Turnpike and you get to the schoolhouse. Turn left, cross Covered Bridge on the county road. Now, watch yourself. There's two roads there. Now, one of them's pretty bad, so... You take the road to the right, you gotta watch for falling rocks, and mind the mud, it'll be up to your windshield. Why don't I take the road to the left? Oh, no, that's the bad one. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't there a better road than that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Just drive down Route 101. That's a fine road. Will that get me there? No, but it's a fine road. <laughs> 
Look, Constable, I can't work on a case unless I get to the Jones farm. Uh, that's true, that's true. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what you do. Uh, say, uh, Sam Shovel, uh, do you know where the new Hollywood freeway is? Yes. Uh, tell me something, will you? Yes. When are you going to finish that darn thing? <laughs> Look, Constable, how do I get to the Jones farm? Oh, the Jones farm. Uh, well, uh, where are you now? I'm in Los Angeles. By golly, I just happened to think. What? You know something? You can't get here from there. <laughs> What's up, Sam? It's murder. Come on, we're going to the Joneses' farm. There's the place, Sam. I'll turn in this driveway. <laughs> Lieutenant Abbott, you're a mighty reckless driver. You shouldn't drive that car so fast. Sam, it's my car. I'll drive it that way till it falls apart. <laughs> You've got to be careful what you say in front of these old cars. <laughs> See you got here, Sam Shovel. Uh, Constable, Sam hmm? and I are here to investigate the murder. Hmm? Who's the victim? Oh, Farmer Jones. Uh, you'll find the body out there in the chicken coop. Well, good luck, boys. Well, so he went into the chicken coop. I started looking for clues. Sam, that big rooster looks suspicious to me. Look, he's got an axe under his left wing. I'll question him, Lieutenant. Mr. Rooster, did you kill Farmer Jones? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Why? Well, today is Sunday, and all us chickens were just dying to have some real southern fried farmer. <laughs> all the boys will be back for a curtain call in just a few seconds. The time it takes to tell you this. Again, that Sam Shovel stuff of yours is getting doper every week. Really want to be a detective? Why don't you go to school and try to learn? Now, just a minute, Abbott. I happen to be a college man. You wouldn't even know what a college... You wouldn't even know a college if you saw it. Oh, yes, I would. All right, what is a college? A college is a big stone building covered with vines and surrounded by veterans and trailers. I, I thought so. You never went to college. And I doubt if our writers did either. And talking about our writers are pretty nice guys. Our writing staff is headed by Pat Costello... With Paul Conlon, Martin Ragaway, Leonard Stern, and Eddie Foreman. Our singer is Hal Winters, and our producer is Charles Vander. And we'll be back with you next Thursday night. Good night, Good night folks. folks. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Listen each Thursday night at this time for another great Abbott and Costello show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood. Be sure to stay tuned for the outstanding entertainment which follows throughout the evening on this ABC station. <laughs>